If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. I'm guessing you've had individuals in your life who just seem to have that knack for being a critic wherever they tend to show up. There's some individuals that when they see you working on a project, they feel like they have to step in and explain to you the better way, their way of doing things. They just do that in a natural kind of way. Or if you have an opinion or a preference, then they'll, uh, they'll let you know, well, there's a different opinion. There's a different preference that, that you need to have. And wouldn't you know what it happens to be my way? They can criticize you for that. I mean, for crying out loud, these are the individuals that are talking to the TV when they see things on TV. They're telling those folks inside that box how they're supposed to live and think too. And uh, they do the same thing when they're in traffic. There are some individuals that just can't stop themselves. It's like they have a compulsion to criticize and they gripe and complain ad nauseum. Now, I want you to realize that when these individuals go into this chronic critical mode, it's their way of attempting to boost their self-esteem at your expense. It's their way of attempting to establish their superiority. And they, they're wanting to let you know, hey, look, I'm a force to be reckoned with. Don't you realize that? And so they're, they're trying to make the topic all about you when in fact it reveals a whole lot more about who they are and all of the emotional garbage that they haven't come to terms with within themselves. So when you encounter that strongly critical individual, there's one word that can neutralize that person right there on the spot and it's the word, okay, okay. Now, you, you may decide that you want to say that out loud, and in some cases, that's what you do. And they can cry and complain. It's like, okay. Uh, or it may be that uh, you feel like, well, that wouldn't exactly be an endearing kind of a thing, or I don't know that that's something I need to, uh, to uh, elaborate out loud. But in your mind, you can still be thinking, okay. You see, uh, when you take this okay approach, you're not saying that what they are is okay, but uh, it's your way of saying, I realize you're not at peace with yourself, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. And I realize that you have unnatural idealisms that you're drawing upon, and frankly, the, the world in front of you is not completely ideal, but you haven't figured that out yet. Or I know that you want me to cater to you, but I just don't feel the need to have to do that. That's where you are. You're trying to make me the issue, but I'm not the issue. Uh, I, I, I'm not in charge of making you feel good as you hope that I would be. Okay, that's where you are. I accept the fact that you're having struggles on the inside and you're not really willing to come to terms with your struggles. Now, when you take this okay approach towards these critics, it's going to create certain questions on the inside of, of them. <laughs> on one hand, they may be thinking, well, aren't you going to argue with me? And when I'm thinking, okay, my uh, response to that is, I don't really feel the need to argue. You already have your mind made up anyway. Why would I need to keep going into that space with you? Or they may be thinking, well, don't I intimidate you? And in my okay this I'm thinking, not really. I I'm not comfortable with you when you criticize, but I'm not going to stand around and shake in my boots either. Or the, the critic can be maybe thinking, well, don't you see how correct I am? And I'm thinking, well, I see that you think that you're correct and you think that you're constantly right. So that's where you are. Uh, or they, in their minds, they may be thinking, well, aren't you going to change? And my response is, I'm, I'm always open to change. I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress, but I don't think that that's what we're really talking about here. You're talking about conformity, and that's not something I'm necessarily into. When you take this okay approach, you realize 
happy or healthy individuals feel very little need to put people in their place, so to speak, with insults and condescension and humiliation. That doesn't have any place in a growing, healthy relationship, whether we're talking about work or family or marriage or parenting or uh, social life. Uh, I, I just don't feel the need to build myself up at your expense. You do, but I don't. Um, basically, uh, when a person constantly criticizes, it's their way of implying, I'm trying to make sense of the world in front of me, and I, I feel like there are certain things that I deserve, but I'm not really uh, getting what I want. I've got to get all you people out there to line up with me so that I can finally feel okay. So when you respond with, okay, it can be your way of, of sending all sorts of different messages. For example, uh, Gus has the itches back there. Uh, for example, when you say, okay, you're implying I I'm comfortable with who I am, even if you're not. Or in your okayness, you're more or less implying I don't have any interest in trying to make you reform. <laughs> That's what you want toward me, but I don't have a reverse uh, interest in that. Or it's also your way of saying you see our relationship as a competition. I don't. I'm not in com competition with you. Or uh, in your okayness, uh, it can be your way of saying, I know you well enough to know that criticism is just what you do. And it's not really about me. It's about you. That's who you are. Or in addition, as you say, okay, it can be your way of saying, I realize that you feel the need to control me, but you know what? I don't feel the need to be controlled by you. We differ on that one, don't we? Or in addition, as you have this mind of okayness, you may be thinking what you consider to be helpful advice isn't helpful. I'll take a pass. Or in addition, uh, basically you can uh, recognize that uh, when a person is chronically critical, they have lots of unresolved anger issues. And frankly, it's your task to take care of your own anger, not mine. Or in addition, feeding that anger is fear. And so you recognize that in their criticism, they have, they're threatened by you and your differentness. And you know what? That's also your task to take care of. It's not my task to have to resolve. I'm willing to have an honest and open discussion and I, I'd love to, uh, to, to share thoughts and feelings in a fair and objective way, but I don't think that's where you are. I get it. And if you think somehow that humiliation or degradation or condescension or shame is, is a way to motivate me, it doesn't motivate me, at least not in the direction that you want it to go. Now, being realistic, in any relationship, we're going to have differences and we're going to have things that disappoint each one of us. That's, that's just natural because we're all so varied and we're all so different in the way that we approach life. A sign of healthy relationships is the ability to just sit down and say objectively, let's talk about who we are. I want to hear you. I want you to hear me. Let's, uh, let's kind of weigh things out and figure if we can have a good listening and understanding and coordination and harmonizing. Harmonize doesn't mean the same thing as conforming and we can move forward uh, knowing that that's what we do. But the chronic critic, it's like, mm, <laughs> I don't do that. I don't know how to do that. Uh, all I know to do is get my club and bang people over the head. And so when you think or say that one word, okay, it's your way of letting it be known. Um, if you want to come towards me with this worn out technique of letting me know how I don't measure up to you, that's on you. That's not on me. <clears throat> uh, you are what you are. I, I'm neither blown away by you, nor do I feel the need to make you any different than what you are. I'm me, I'm a work in progress, but I'll not engage when you come to me with your chronic criticisms, okay? Okay. 
And I hope that videos such as this will give you some good insight as to what you're dealing with within yourself and how you engage with other individuals when they bring their unhealthiness to you. If you've not already done so, I would encourage you to uh, go beneath and hit that subscribe button to our Dr. Les Carter channel. Uh, you know that we also have my uh, Surviving Narcissism channel. Most of you are familiar with that. If you have a need for counseling, and many times when you have these ongoing conflicts, it's uh, it's good sometimes to have somebody that can bring objectivity. Uh, if you have a counselor in your area that you could uh, refer to, uh, I would encourage you to do so. Or right now, online counseling is very popular, so we have a sponsor that could help you find uh, with a whole team of licensed, and experienced professional counselors, and uh, that you could choose from. That could you could uh, uh, choose from. And so I would encourage you to seek that if that would be beneficial to you. In addition, we have my courses, and these are more than just seminars. They're uh, uh, a whole host of videos with written material and, and uh, worksheets. And, and if that's something you uh, would be interested in, we have my free to be uh, uh, seminar course, and we also have my new one, This Is Me, It's All About Establishing Boundaries. And so uh, we have links below to those. And in addition, we have my books, etc. Okay. Those, those, those people are out there. They're going to criticize. That's what they do. Okay. In the meantime, I want you to think, well, but do I have to make, uh, put, allow them to be in charge of me? No, I don't think so. The more comfortable you are with who you are and you have these other individuals that'll say, but I'm not comfortable with you. We're just going to say, that's your problem to solve. My task is to be a person of good character and integrity. And if that's, not enough for you? Okay.